Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And today our program is Autism Friendship and the Friendship Walk. Before we get into the introductions, Will, what's with your shirt? Funny you should ask. This week's shirt is from the KC, KCSB radio station. Uh, where, from, from UC Santa Barbara. Uh, am I... Where my middle sister Elena is a D is a DJ on, uh, on. I'm, I'm I'm proud of her for as as a me, as a member of, of of the board of the radio station. This week we are introducing a new correspondent, uh, Jennifer Brooks, who will be handling a book review uh, this and other weeks. And as mentioned today, our program is. Uh, autism, friendship, and the friendship walk, and our guests will be from Best Buddies, um, Alia Al Sharif, and John Hammond. And Will, if you'll take it from there. Gladly. First question: Tell us about Best Buddies. So Best Buddies is a nonprofit organization that works with people with one-on-one -on -one friendships and people with disabilities. Sure, yeah, Best Buddies, as John mentioned, is a nonprofit organization. In addition to having a friendship program that matches people with disabilities with people without disabilities and friendships, they have a jobs program helping people with disabilities find jobs, a buddy ambassador leadership training program helping people with disabilities to be uh, leaders in their community and um, to speak up for themselves and their rights. We're glad to be here today. Thank you um, to you both for having us. We're both, well, I'm in particular a really big fan of the show. Thank you. How did you get involved with in Best Buddies? How did I get involved with Best Buddies? I met Caitlin and Alia at USF. That's how we got. That's how I got involved. Yeah, so I got involved. Uh, I met John several years ago when I uh, was involved in the Best Buddies chapter at the University of San Francisco. Prior to that, uh, almost 15 years ago now, I got involved in Best Buddies. Um, I was the first member of a high school chapter um, when I was living in Carlsbad, which is in San Diego County. And at our high school chapter, we matched high school students without disabilities with high school students with disabilities. And since from that moment on, I've been involved in Best Buddies, which like I said, for almost 15 years now from high school um, to colleges and now as a young professional. Tell us about the Friendship Walk. Okay, the Friendship Walk is on April the 22nd, 8 to 12 in Golden Gate Park, 50 Hagawa T1, T Garden Drive. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a 5K walk. Yeah, we're really excited this year. Um, as in years past, we're having it uh, in Golden Gate Park, as John mentioned. Uh, and it's uh, at the Music Conquers and Band Shell, which is in between the Academy of Sciences and the De Young Museum. It's a 5K walk that'll start at the Band Shell and then take walkers around Stowe Lake and back to the Band Shell. This year, um, since the walk is on April 22nd, it's Earth Day. And so we're excited to have, in addition to our theme of walking for inclusion and walking for friendship, uh, go green together. Because like Best Buddies, you know, we can't inv advance inclusion for people with disabilities unless we do it together, and we can't save Mother Earth unless we do it together. So we're excited to tie the theme of Earth Day to our walk this year, uh, and it's going to take place at 8 a.m., and then we'll wrap up at noon, and it should be a lot of fun this year. How long has the Best Buddies been doing the Friendship Walk? John, do you remember? I think it's been about six years six now, Six right? years, Will. Yeah, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. This year we're hoping to have 700 attendees and we have a very large ambitious fundraising goal to raise $120,000. Um, so we're hoping by being on the show today we can encourage your viewers to sign up and join the Friendship Walk and start their own team. Well, who's going to be the speaker of the Friendship Walk? This year's MC is going to be Katie Green as well as our buddy, Gian. Where does Katie, where is Katie Green? Katie Green works for KCBS radio stations she's in the awesome Bay Area, DJ. and she's an awesome local DJ. She does dance party Saturdays. You might recognize her from TV. We're excited to have her this year. Also, the website is bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org. Backslash Bay Area if people want to sign up for a walk. Bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org. Yeah, backslash Bay Area. Got it. Thank you. You earlier told us about... Uh, how you got involved, but 
tell us a little bit, both of you, about what got you involved, what made you interested originally to be, uh, become members of uh, Best Buddies. Okay, what got me involved is um, how Anthony Kennedy Shriver founded Best Buddies, because I met his mom, Eunice Kennedy Shriver. So Anthony is the one who founded Best Buddies in 1989, Keith. Mm-hmm. And what did you like about uh, uh, Best Buddies when you uh, met her, and and or rather when you met Anthony? When I met Anthony, it was fun to meet. You all, if you go to LC every year, you always get to meet him, and he's a very nice person. Excellent. What about you, Alia? What what attracted you originally to Best Buddies? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, I got involved in Best Buddies when I was in high school. And there was a, a class um, at our high school for people with disabilities, and there were students with disabilities in my gym class. Mm-hmm. And I noticed how the people with disabilities were um, separate from the people without disabilities, and I thought that wasn't right. And I thought we should all work together and have gym together and have classes together and have lunch together. Um, and Best Buddies was this organization that was new to our campus, and they needed people to be involved in the club. And I, I joined because I really um, was inspired by the mission of the organization. I also have members of my extended family who have autism and disabilities, and so I think the work that Best Buddies is doing in the community to bridge the gap um, and create a more inclusive world for all people is amazing, and um, I feel really grateful to be a part of this organization and that the organization even exists. Excellent. And I know you've both been involved for many years. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, uh, besides your uh, work with the Friendship Walk, what types of activities you've both done? Yes, I've gone to the state health committee. I've gone up to Sacramento and testified at the state health committee for the Shriver R Word Act. Keith, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I can. Ha- um, I went up to the state R Word um, state health committee up in Sacramento to testify to change the R Word from retarded to intellectual developmental disability, mm-hmm. and, pe- and it's people first language that we use now on. Oh, I, I don't. Can you explain to our viewers what that means? Yes. So Governor Governor Brown signed a bill that says, please change the R word mm-hmm. to intellectual development disability. And now it's called Rose's Law in all, in all of U.S. Excellent. Well, you you and our viewers can be very proud of the, the work that you did there, John. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. And what about you, Alia? So I, uh, well, John and I are both on the advisory board for mm-hmm. Best Buddies. And so in addition to helping to support the Friendship Walk, there's a large fall event that is planned, a gala event, uh, where we fundraise for the organization. And so part of the Friendship Walk and why where we're hosting it, and um, we have a lofty goal this year so that we can continue our great programming throughout the Bay Area and supporting our chapters, which is where our friendship programs are hosted. Uh, I also helped start the Best Buddies Young Professional oh. Professionals Board this year, which is an opportunity for young people who maybe aren't in school anymore but want to uh, interact and have fun and make friends with people with and without intellectual disabilities. So it's open to both demographics, um, and it's new, and we encourage your viewers, if they want to get involved in Best Buddies outside of the Friendship Walk, to, um, to come to our Young Professional events that we have. How can they do that? How can they find out more of that is? So uh, if you go on Facebook, we have Best Buddies Northern California uh, Young Professionals. You can find our page there and like us. And when you like us, someone will reach out to you and ask you to fill out a Google form so that you can be kept up to date about our upcoming events. Excellent. And then I guess finally, you've both been involved for a long time and you've seen the organization grow and change. Can you let our viewers know a little bit about how the uh, organization has evolved over the years? First part, and then second part, what things may be upcoming or what are what is Best Buddies looking to do in the near future? So Best Buddies is looking in the near future to go out of business. Yeah, that's the, that's the vision of the organization, right? Where, the organiz- where Best Buddies doesn't have to exist and people with disabilities are fully integrated into society and the organization doesn't have to exist. And you're right, John. Uh, and I know since Anthony Kennedy Shriver founded the organization in 1989, as John mentioned, there was only a handful of people involved in the organization. Mm-hmm. Now there are thousands of people involved locally in the Bay Area and hundreds of thousands of people involved all over the world. So Best Buddies isn't just in Northern California or the U.S. It's across, it's across the world. And it's making a big impact in the lives of those 
with and without disabilities. I know in the Bay Area, we're so fortunate um, to continue to expand our programming. So it's not just in San Francisco, but Best Buddies has hired staff in San Jose mm -hmm. um, to um, assist with programming there and help people find jobs in San Jose. And they also are starting a Fresno office um, as well, so we can expand the reach of our programs. Another big event that John and I both participate in um, through Best Buddies is the Best Buddy First Castle Challenge. Mm. John, do you want to speak a little yes. bit about that? Yes. For the viewers, just to let you guys know that this Wednesday is the Hearst Castle Challenge kickoff event at Pete's Tavern in San Francisco. Where's that? Do you know? Pete's Tavern is now next to the ballpark. Mm -hmm. So the Hearst, for the Hearst Castle Challenge this year, it's a 15, 30, 60, and 100 mile ride. And I'm doing a 15 this year. And Carl Lewis hosts the 5K for the, front, for the Hearst Castle Challenge. Yeah, we're excited about this year's uh, ride, and it's going to be on September 9th, mm -hmm. and it starts in Monterey, and it's a bike ride that goes all the way down to Hearst Castle Ranch um, in San Simeon, I believe. Mm -hmm. Last year, I did the 62-mile bike ride, and this year, Yikes. I'm, embarking, <laughs> I'm embarking on the 100-miler, um, and so uh, I still got a lot of training ahead of me, but we've got a few months until the, the ride is here, um, but we're excited in that event in particular raises quite a bit of money for the International Best Buddies organization and also supports our California programs here. And so uh, a lot of folks from the Bay Area do make their way down to Monterey to mm -hmm. participate in that event because it's not that far. And if your viewers are bike riders or if you want to participate in a walk, there's a walk associated with the Hearst Castle Challenge ride. We'd welcome you to become involved and just Google Best Buddies Hearst Castle Challenge. Very good. Um our last bit, are there any other ways that uh, you can let our viewers know about how to get involved? Yes. You can go on Best Buddies, out, Best Buddies California, Best Buddies French Walk dot, dot org forward slash barrier to, to register to volunteer. And we're also looking for people to help raise money for Best Buddies. And also, help Will Burnick raise money, viewers, please. <laughs> Yeah, we for hope walk. all your viewers will sign up to be a part of our Friendship Walk taking place on Earth Day, Saturday, April 22nd. And as John mentioned, you can sign up at bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org forward slash Bay Area. And as you mentioned, John, uh, helping out the organization by giving money is very important. Is there a place where people can go for that? Yes, they can, Keith. On the Best Buddies Friendship Walk, Best Buddies Ford, Best Buddies California, you want to take it all in? Yeah, bestbuddiesfriendshipwalk.org forward slash Bay Area. There's a number of things you can do there. You can join a team. Mm -hmm. And if you join the team, you can start your own page and fundraise um, directly. You can donate to someone else like Will and or John and their pages. And you can also sign up for the Friendship Walk. Really, really good. Well, we wish you and the best buddies the very best of luck. And now uh, we're going to be introducing a new segment to our program um, and a new member to our program and a new member to our board, Jennifer Brooks. As mentioned, she's going to be doing a commentary uh, each program on books related to our community. And let's begin with uh, talking about uh, your background. How did you uh, get involved in uh, the autistic community and uh, the Ascend Board? Hi, thank you, Keith. I'm very excited to be here, thrilled to be invited. I was diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome on my 30th birthday after 30 years of sensing that there was something that set me apart from other people, but not being sure, not having a clear idea about exactly what it was. And actually when the formal diagnosis was handed down, the first thing I felt was a sense of relief. I was like, wow, so that's it, that explains it. It would have been good to know this 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, at the time I was living in Texas because I had lost my job here in California. And turned out I couldn't find a job in Texas either, so I moved back and went back to community college and started taking prerequisite math classes for my master's degree program in statistics, which I am now in my final quarter of. I should be graduating in June. The ceremony will be held Excellent. June 9th. At CSU East Bay, I am working for a master's degree in statistics. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, how did you learn about uh, Ascend? Actually, I 
was referred to by some friends of mine who happened to read a review of Mike's book, The Autism Job Club, Mr. Burnick. Our executive, and, yes, for those who don't. <laughs> yes, he's also quite a talented writer. <laughs> he wrote the book, The Autism Job Club, and a friend of mine happened to see it, a review of it in the San Francisco Chronicle, and gave me a copy of the article and said, why don't you go check this out? So the first meeting I attended happened to be one of the brunches almost exactly two years ago to the state. And yeah, I mean, I guess it was a bit awkward working, walking into a room with a bunch of people that I didn't know, but hey, it's an autism group. They don't expect me to have perfect social skills, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, I was welcomed. I met Alan Kiviat, who always comes with his Scrabble board, and we played a very nice round of Scrabble, and we've been quite good friends ever since. And I've also made other good friends who I treasure, and I'm very glad I have those people in my life. Thank you. So, what made you decide you wanted to do a book review segment on our program? I've had a lifelong interest in books. I learned to read at a very early age. I believe I might have been three years old when I began Whoa. reading on my own, not even younger. I'm not sure exactly how young I was. But, yeah, I've always felt a special affinity with books, especially when it's hard to make friends. But books are always there for you, and books can provide you with good information and tell you good stories and even teach you some things about people, which I had difficulty learning any other way. <laughs> well, thank you. So uh, you're going to tell us about uh, this particular book. Um, could you introduce it and, and tell us a little bit about what uh, interests you in this particular one? Okay. Reskilling America, Learning to Labor in the 21st Century. Authors, Catherine S. Newman and Hella Winston. This is a highly readable book about the status of vocational education in America. It is also a plea for vocational education to receive far more support, respect, and above all, funding than it currently does. The book begins by explaining why our current emphasis on college for everyone is failing us. It continues with a history of vocational education in American schools. Then the emphasis turns to describing examples of successful American vocational education programs and explaining why they work. Next, the book examines the highly successful German system for providing both vocational and academic education for students. After a brief detour to math education, and arguing that vocational education could enhance students' understanding of math. The authors share their vision for replicating German-style vocational education in the United States. Although the word autism is only mentioned once in the book by an employer who states that one of his interns is affected by autism, the issues raised in the book are very relevant to those of us on the spectrum. The book does not provide a blueprint for providing jobs for people on the spectrum, but does provide a serious and important critique of the current educational system in America, which is failing students both on and off the autism spectrum. For at least one generation now, our schools have been pushing all students, regardless of race or socioeconomic background, to apply for and attend four-year colleges and universities so they will be able to qualify for, quote, good jobs that require a four-year college degree. While this goal sounds noble in theory, it has been a disaster in practice. So many of the educational system's limited resources are poured into raising test scores that very little to nothing is left over for other priorities. This hurts all students to some degree, but especially hurts students on the autism spectrum. Those in need of special education services see budgets for their support programs being cut and resources taken away from them. Those who can do well academically on their own see all of their school's resources being directed toward other students whose needs they are told are more important than theirs, with nothing left over to meet their unique emotional and social needs. Although implementing a system for vocational education modeled after Germany's would not solve all of these problems, it would go a long way toward solving many of them. And with fewer problems for our schools to deal with, Dare we hope they could finally start to give our students on the spectrum the attention they deserve. Well, thank you. This week, unfortunately, our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy, was unable to make us. 
uh, an appearance with us, but however, she was able to give us uh, information, and I will make a poor and humble effort to uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> make up for her. So, beginning on Saturday, April 1st, the nonprofit organization Offerings will put on an event called Autism Awesomeness from 1 to about 3.30 p.m. at uh, St. Luke's Presbyterian Church, 10 Bayview Drive in San Rafael, where you can come and celebrate with those living on the spectrum and those that love, support, admire, mentor, teach, and believe in their potential. They will have amazing singers, musicians, artists, drummers, and authors ready to show you their gifts and talents. This is hosted by Karen Kaplan, and tickets are available at www. Dot globalofferings.org. That's www.globalofferings.org. The following Saturday, the April 8th, uh, our organization, Ascend, has a job club meeting in San Francisco from uh, uh, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. More details to come. If you wish to find out about the job club or any other aspect of Ascend, go to www.aascend. O -R -G. That's www.aascend.org. And then finally, on Saturday the 8th, the Autism and Cal annual 5K run and 3K walk at the UC Berkeley campus at the Sather Tower, Berkeley. Um, unfortunately, we have no more information, but again, that will be on Saturday the 8th at uh, Sather Tower on the UC Berkeley campus. Thank you. Will, are there any other events that you know of? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Well, what, now we all know about the Friendship Walk. Mm -hmm. And oh, this last, fr last night, the Power Rangers movie finally premiered. The Power, the Power Rangers are popular in the autism community. This, this was, it, it's been 20 years since their, since their last movie. Did you enjoy it? I, I sure did. I saw it last night with Wes at the Kabuki. Okay, um, so just to let people know that April 9th is the Autism Awareness Game at USF, and our very own Stacy Kennedy will be singing the national anthem there. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, there's one last thing. Uh, as we are taping this uh, recently in this last week, um, the Children's uh, Television Workshop, uh, the producers of Sesame Street, have decided to introduce a new character uh, to the Muppets on Sesame Street uh, called Julie. Why we are mentioning that is she is autistic. So uh, our hat's off to them. We'll see how it goes. Um, but again, Finally, <laughs> we're making some progress. So I think that's about it for this week. And I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm John Hammond. I'm Ali Al Sharif. I'm Jennifer Brooks. Thank you. And until next time, this is Ascend TV, live on the autism spectrum.